Hi friends, welcome to worship with the people of the Open Door Churches, the United Methodist of Salem-Kaiser. I'm here to welcome you to worship this week and to invite you to begin this time together with prayer. Let us pray together. We pray to you, O oh God, for the life of our city, that its leaders and people might learn the things that make for peace. We thank you for the vision of a city centered on your worship and service, where diverse people live in harmony. Through the grace of Jesus Christ, may we share in making our earthly city more like that heavenly city. Amen. Every promise we can make His grace. Every mountain we will climb, every ray of hope we shine, every blessing left behind is only by His grace. Grace alone, which God supplies, strength unknown he will provide christ in us our cornerstone we will go forth in grace alone every soul we long to reach every heart we hope to teach everywhere we share his peace is only by his grace every loving word we say every tear we wipe away every sorrow turn to praise is only by his grace grace alone which god supplies strength unknown he will provide christ in us our cornerstone we will go forth in grace alone grace alone which God supplies, strength unknown, he will provide, Christ in us, our cornerstone, we will go forth in grace alone. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but they doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Hello friends, my name is Pastor Alyssa and it is a joy to bring you the message on this very full Sunday. Across our connection, we are celebrating various things today. And um, so I thought I would name a few of those for you. Today is Trinity Sunday, uh, where we celebrate uh, God uh, as Father, Creator, uh, we celebrate Jesus the Son, uh, we celebrate uh, the Holy Spirit among us that we received as gift last week, we recognize that gift last week and Pentecost. Uh, today is also Peace with Justice Sunday. 
And in some of our spaces, we are celebrating graduates today. And so it is very full and it's beautiful to see things so full and exciting and celebratory uh, today in our worship spaces and beyond. And so I invite you to join me now in a spirit of prayer. Loving and gracious God, let your word be heard, lived, loved, and celebrated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts uh, be acceptable in your sight, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Before we step into this Trinity Sunday and Peace with Justice Sunday, I want to take you back a week to Pentecost um, because I learned a different way about viewing Pentecost this year. And it's really reshaping the way in which I understand theology and the way in which I am recognizing that God at work and the world around us. And so I want to share that here in this space today uh, because it helps me to build on what uh, I have understood uh, Peace with Justice Sunday and Trinity Sunday to be. So I am a podcast listener. I love a podcast and if you have good podcast recommendations. Please let me know. But I listen to a podcast every week called Working Preacher, and it comes from Luther Seminary, and uh, different professors come together and they read through the lectionary passages for the week and discuss them um, and talk about uh, what is standing out to them as they read the scripture this year. And I find that very helpful and inspiring to uh, listen to other people talk about scripture, uh, especially when uh, the people gathered are uh, studied theologians, but also um, come from a variety of contexts. And so uh, the three professors who were gathered this last week are from uh, the Lutheran tradition, the Methodist tradition, as well as the Presbyterian tradition. And I found it a bit more uh, rich and inspiring this week, especially because it's Pentecost. And we, in our scripture in Acts chapter 2, talked about how uh, people were gathered from all over and were able to understand one another. Um, so it just felt a little bit more deep this week with that connection. So they looked at it a bit differently as Pentecost not being this one-time moment, but that throughout the, the book of Acts and beyond into our time and space, there are many Pentecosts and uh, that is true if we understand Pentecost to be the breaking in of the Spirit, moments in which uh, God has broken through uh, with the Spirit to set the church in a new direction, to set our understanding in a new direction, has broken in in these times of chaos and confusion and uncertainty uh, and helped us to understand faith in a new way. And so the spirit didn't just break in and wasn't gifted this one time that God's Holy Spirit has continued to be at work from that moment and beyond. And um, if you want to, you could call that many, many Pentecosts, like um, it's hard, like many, like M-A-N-Y, M-I-N-I. So like several small Pentecostal moments, I guess. Um, and I appreciated this way of understanding uh, Pentecost because it's always felt to me something like, uh, oh, that happens. And that happened in their time and context. And it's, our, it's a bit confusing if you really read it <laughs> because it, so much happens there that you're like, what is what is going on? Um, but to recognize that this giving of the Holy Spirit wasn't limited to uh, one 
time and space to a people, but that God's spirit continues to be at work in the world among us. And that is partially what we celebrate, not only on Pentecost, but on Trinity Sunday, that we worship a triune God, a God, uh, the Father or Creator, however you like to understand that, uh, and Christ Jesus, God's Son, and Jesus, uh, after he ascended to be with God, God uh, did not leave God's people alone, um, but provided them with the Holy Spirit, uh, advocates, uh, leader, uh, a uh, spirit among the people that helped them to continue to live into who God calls them to be uh, and to know that you are not alone. And that's what we celebrate today on Trinity Sunday. But because we are United Methodists, we are also celebrating Peace with Justice Sunday. And so if we take our understanding, our new understanding of Pentecost, in which God's Spirit is continually at work uh, and continues to break in among us, um, and our understanding of worshiping a triune God who is among us in a variety of ways, uh, then we have this peace with justice uh, that goes along really well with our scripture today. Our scripture today from Matthew is also known as this Great Commission, this sending out of disciples. This is how Matthew ends uh, his gospel. Now Jesus is setting them out into a new direction um, that they will be the leaders and the teachers, and they will be sent out to baptize, um, in which we <laughs> understand baptism through the Trinity as well. And so it's all just connected in there together. <laughs> and um, I think that's why they all fall together on one specific Sunday. It leaves a lot for us to unpack together. But, at the center of each of these moments, uh, each of these celebrations, we find um, the Holy Spirit at work. And I want to name a few of those ways I've seen that in our community. As many of you uh, know, we are in this time of transition. And I have been uh, reflecting on the ways in which uh, we as a community have strived uh, for peace with justice. I want to name some good things I've witnessed in our community and ways in which we have embraced uh, that the Spirit is at work among us uh, and ways that we have uh, gone out into our community, uh, lived into this uh, commissioning uh, scripture as a community of faith, as a community who embraces their baptismal and their membership vows uh, to resist evil and justice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. One of the main ways that we've done that as a community is connected in our food ministries. Some of our churches house food banks. Uh, some of our churches are connected to the local food bank in their community and uh, volunteer there as well as donate uh, food and resources to those spaces. Uh, and uh, that is one way we are um, stepping up to and against food injustices in our community, making sure uh, that people in our community have access to those resources. Uh, a similar uh, ministry to that is our support of congregations helping people. We as an open door church community uh, host that uh, organization in one of our buildings, but we've also been supporters of that financially throughout um, 
my time here and before and will continue to be as uh, we are in community with one another. And this helps with uh, resources uh, beyond uh, food resources. So they help with things like rent and transportation um, and many, many other ways in which they are helping uh, meet the needs in our community. Uh, during my time here, we've, I have participated with a number of you in different marches in our community. Uh, we participated in the March for Our Lives as we were um, marching to end gun violence. And that's still uh, something that our community is uh, passionate about and working towards. And there are going to be uh, some resources coming out uh, soon that you can embrace uh, to as we continue to strive uh, towards uh, ending gun violence together. And um, it's another example of peace with justice and that we as a community have uh, been participating in. Also, um, a, a few years ago, we um, across our community, several of us were um, involved uh, in a letter writing campaign uh, when uh, immigrants were being held in the, uh, Sheridan and we were stepping out uh, for their rights and for their freedoms and their uh, peace and justice, so to speak. And so uh, we participated uh, in uh, worship services out at in Sheridan at the prison there, as well as uh, writing uh, letters to our uh, uh, people who were inside, as well as to people who uh, could help fix the situation. And so these are just a few of many examples of ways in which we, as an Open Door Church community continue to strive uh, for justice, continue to uh, respond to the spirit at work in our hearts and in our communities as we uh, continue to seek to um, bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And so I encourage us as we step forward as a community together that we continue to strive for peace with justice, that we continue to listen to uh, the spirit at work as we uh, name the ways in which we have witnessed uh, the Holy Spirit breaking in and breaking through us as we uh, embrace uh, God the Father, God the Creator, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit on this Trinity Sunday. Amen.
Friends, we are gathered here at Christ's table together with one another. So we invite you to join in our communion liturgy today. I'll lead us in a prayer of confession, and then uh, we invite you to follow uh, the liturgy on the screen and uh, join Sally with the voice of the people. Let us join now in this prayer of confession. Gracious God, we confess our sin, which separates us from you. We know how people who belong to you should live, but we fail to live that way. At times we have forgotten that we bear your image and have done evil. At times we have forgotten to live in response to your sacrifice for us and have acted selfishly. At times we have ignored the voice of your spirit speaking to our conscience, and we have followed the desires of our own heart. As a result, we have lived for self rather than for our neighbor. Our lives have been diminished, our witness has been stifled, and your image within us has been tarnished. Forgive us, good Lord, through Jesus Christ. By your spirit, guide us to live as people who know and love you. Amen. The Lord who saves you says, I am the God who forgives your sins. I do this because of who I am. I will not hold your sins against you. Let us praise the triune God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, worlds without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters, and the righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is his son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you, do, as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, 
your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, the table has been prepared. We invite you to join us uh, for communion. Oh yeah, bread of life. Mm -hmm. Cup of blessing. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 into this time of prayer, I invite you to remember always that we are here with you. If you have a prayer of joy or concern that you would share with the Open Door Church community, with the pastors and those who are a part of our prayer ministry, we invite you to email those prayer requests to info at opendoorchurches.org. Let us join together in a time of prayer. Gracious and almighty God, this day and every day, we give thanks for your presence in our lives. We know that you were before any of creation existed. And we know that you will be present in the completion of all things. When your kingdom becomes here on earth as it is already in heaven. We know, Lord, that we often fall short of your glory and your grace. That sometimes we turn away and we refuse to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, shaping us into the community that resembles what it means to live in Christ's grace. For all those times that we have fallen short, 
we ask your forgiveness. We know that there is always forgiveness in you. That there is always a chance for reconciliation and peace. And so we ask that you would help us to extend that to one another as well. May we be more like you in every way. And in that way, may we be found to have been faithful disciples, like those we have read about in the scriptures, the ones whom Jesus first taught to pray these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Friends, on behalf of Open Door Churches, I want to thank you for your generous giving and support for the ministries of Open Door Churches. We are able to help uh, our community uh, because of your generosity. Please continue to do that. And you can do that on safely on our website, www opendoorchurches.org. Up on the top right, you will find the menu button where you will find the giving, um, the giving page. Uh, and you can choose any, any ministry that you want to support um, to make your donations online. You can also send in your checks if you'd like, rather do that to all our churches, uh, and they are Clear Lake United Methodist Church, First Salem United Methodist Church, Morningside United Methodist Church, and Trinity United Methodist Church. Now, would you please join me in this Thanksgiving prayer? God of love and peace, you call us to the Great Commission with you to make disciples of all nations, receive these gifts and bless them to restore your people, establish peace with justice throughout the world until all your creation experiences healing and wholeness. Pour out your spirit on those who are part of the ministries supported this offering. May they be encouraged to be agents of peace with justice in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hi friends, I'm Pastor Kalina with our Open Door Minute. The upcoming week is a very special week for our conference. It is the annual conference week. It is held over at Meridian, Idaho which means that Pastor Alisa and me will be attending that, um, which also means that next Sunday we won't be at our campus churches. Nevertheless, our amazing um, district superintendent, uh, Wendy Woodworth, uh, had recorded a sermon that will be played in our campuses on uh, that Sunday, which is next Sunday. This is one of the amazing things that we have with the, the online uh, worship is that we are able to uh, play uh, sermons from our district superintendent uh, in our churches uh, while we are not with you. So be prepared for that next Sunday. We, me and Pastor Elisa won't be with you and just one to uh, give you a heads up about that. Now may you go forth filled with the love of God, the grace of Jesus, and the peace of the Holy Spirit to be a peacemaker. Amen. Amen.